Hello and welcome to episode two of our Behind the Silicon series. My name is Lucy Hedges and right now we're at Qualcomm HQ in San Diego where I'll be joining our Snapdragon insiders once again as we find out about Qualcomm's history and the new design and testing procedures for Snapdragon X Elite, which is of course the company's compute platform for laptops built for AI. Hey guys, hey, so we're here at Qualcomm HQ. Very exciting. Super exciting. Yeah. Always been super curious about what goes on behind the scenes here at the Qualcomm HQ. Obviously since Hawaii, but want to sort of get to know how they got to that point and what tests they run and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. Well, this is where the magic happens. Let's go and find out about the innovations that have made Snapdragon X Elite. Hi, welcome to Qualcomm headquarters. I'm Riley Trutman. I work in product marketing for Snapdragon X Elite. So let's go learn more about it with Kadar. Yeah. Let's do it. Hey guys. Oh. Thanks for joining me. Kedar, first of all, congratulations on such an exciting and game-changing announcement of the Snapdragon X Elite at the Snapdragon Summit 2023. We are super excited to be here and find out more about what goes into really building such a game-changing compute platform. Yeah, so the Snapdragon Summit was incredible and the standout thing for me was Snapdragon X Elite. What impact do you think that have on the industry now? Uh, you know, the PC space hasn't seen uh, some amount of innovation in many, many years. And so we come from the mobile legacy. We've been able to disrupt that space in so many ways. We're looking to do the exact same thing with the XLE. So there's lots of things that we've uh, drawn in, in terms of innovation, the custom Qualcomm Orion CPU cores, or some incredible graphics performance. And obviously we are in the age of AI. Gen AI has started to become more prevalent these days. But we've been supporting uh, AI for more than 10 years. So you say that Snapdragon X Elite is built for AI. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Anything and everything we do is going to have AI in it. There is going to be some form of an emotional intelligence between us and the PC. I don't think there's going to be any industry that's not going to be able to take advantage of AI. Operations, manufacturing, somebody that's trying to write code, you know, what goes into producing such a game-changing compute platform? Why don't we go to the whiteboard and I'll try to whiteboard exactly what we do with the process. I have been wondering awesome. about the whiteboard. For us, it's always starting with the consumer. We always want to make sure that we understand what exactly the consumer wants. We go in to starting to think about the concept. What exactly do we want to drive in the product? What's going to make the consumer happy? Then we figure out how we architect the product. You know, when we did this in the mobile space and we had incredible cameras, you can see our crews recording with uh, incredible Snapdragon phones. If you remember many years back, you would walk into a very dense neighborhood and you'd lose your GPS signal. When was the last time that has happened? Now it hasn't. We spend a lot of time making sure that we can triangulate three GPS satellites to get you the best position we always keep the consumer in mind and low power and battery life. Then when you think of exactly what we're building, so this comes down to our silicon. This is understanding exactly how many CPU cores do we want, what kind of graphics performs, what kind of cameras do we want, and what exactly is the product we're going to build. Then the fun part is we actually execute and we pride ourselves in making sure that we execute on target. Once you have the product that you've built, we decide how we're going to go to market. We close the loop back because we want the feedback from the consumer exactly on how they like products. Now, as we talk about go to market, this is where the Snapdragon X Elite will come into form factors like oh, this. Excited. So throughout Qualcomm's history as a company, where would you say the Snapdragon X Elite platform stands? You know, Qualcomm's been around for over 35 years. I've personally been at Qualcomm for about 16 years now. This is the most exciting thing I've ever worked on. I, I just can't wait for consumers to get a hand on these platforms. So overall, I'm super excited about where we're headed. So we're about to enter the testing lab. So that means coats on. Let's all go. Right. Suit up. Oh, okay. yeah. It is a first for me. Mine, all right. Looking all good, right. guys. Where we are today is the systems performance lab and we will show you demos today on the power, performance, and thermals of the Snapdragon X Elite. Let's check it out. Yeah. This is Senji, one of our hardware validation engineers. Hey. Hey. I do the system level validation. We characterize 
every single code. We start with the safest voltage and we drop the voltage to where the device operates its minimum stability level. And then we also enforce the temperature conditions. This is our robotic handler designed to run our automation like 120 compute devices at once. We want to make sure that all the devices operate at optimal voltage, performance, thermal condition, and best power. My team is basically responsible for coming up uh, with the thermal controls to protect the components inside of our packages. We have a couple thermal couples that are placed across the device. Snapdragon X Elite platform is kind of idling. And as you can see, you can, even if I pinpoint the red hot spots, it's relatively cool. Okay. So now I'm actually going to run the actual workload. Like a stress test. The yeah, it's a stress test. It's a benchmark. I'll take a picture of it again. Zoom in. It's heating up. Yeah, it's heating up, right? And that's expected. It really matches our models. But even if you zoom in the red, it's not really that hot. That really speaks to like how well our controls are working, right? The thermal solution that we use. So today I'm going to be talking about the efficiency power curves that we presented in our tech summit. We work with the chip pretty much from the pre-silicon state. We emulate the performance, then we try to correlate them in the silicon state. So what exactly are we looking at on these graphs here? This one is the uh, idle power that has been captured when we don't have any workload running. Moving on to the one on left, we took a look at uh, what the bench power looks like at one particular operating frequencies, and then we kind of measure it across all the range. The peaks are representing the active subtests, wherein you have the idols in the middle, and it comes together to form the power curves that were presented at the Snapdragon Summit this year. Yeah. <laughs> we remember those stats. Yeah. So welcome guys to PDT Lab. This is product testing PDT room. We test the devices uh, that we developed in Qualcomm. There's some audio, some cameras, some specifically thermal, and see if they run together well at the same time. Another thing that we do is you're testing like a movie streaming, uh, video streaming, music streaming, game as well. And just for the stressing purposes, I sometimes just do everything at the same time and see if the device crashes. So like extreme multitasking. Yes, that one is using 90% most of the time. If it's worked to the max, we can find more errors that we can fix. Has it ever pulled up? really bizarre results like, like a breakthrough yeah. discovery yeah and when that happens we're just like yes we find yeah. another <laughs> we have a tech solution here called the always sensing solution what it does is it will always scan for like movement or any other trigger based on what the vendor wants first up is the distance check so what's going to happen is that this form factor is going to go towards the face it's going to make sure that the screen is brightly lit, it's active. The robot itself is gonna move back around 2.5 feet and beyond. That's after 10 seconds, which is the timer I've set, the screen is supposed to turn off. Oh, and it's off. There we go, it's off. So the use case here is if you walk away, do you want someone to see any sensitive information that you have going yeah. on? Mm -hmm. Okay, so the next recording, gaze detection, it's gonna check the yaw rotation of your face. So that's the horizontal movements. If you are roughly at 45 degree ish, if you're being inattentive, then it's supposed to dim the screen. Just save some power that way. And then when you look back at it, it's going to become active again, brightly lit. Okay, so we're now in the Qualcomm Museum and we are joined by Shriram Dixit, Director of Product Management for Compute. Snapdragon X Lead is so exciting. And what are some key features that allow it to achieve such impressive levels of performance and efficiency? Snapdragon X Lead, as you know, it's a performance beast. It's a system on a chip. It includes many different IPs like CPU, GPU, NPU, Qualcomm Sensing Hub, Qualcomm ISP, Snapdragon Seamless, many of these things put together, to name a few, to create this chip. So at the Snapdragon Summit, we learned about the AI assistant. How does Snapdragon X Elite make that possible? So Snapdragon X Elite has the NPU, which is a neural processing unit. The performance that it has is about 45 tops, 45 trillion operations per second. It's the fastest NPU. For example, Llama 2 is a large language model with up to 13 billion parameters. So our chip can run those models at a very high token rate. So let me show you a demo. Can you generate an image of a cabin in a forest with Aurora Borealis in the sky? There you go. Wow. Wow, look at that. Impressive. Everything is happening on device. Power token rates relevant to the user experience. 
token rate is like a metric. Uh, a high token rate means it can consider more information before it can generate a text or an image output. A person can read 200 to 300 words a minute, which is about five to six tokens per second. Our NPU is capable of delivering about 30 plus tokens per second. Wow. Our GPU enables day-to-day -day activities like gaming or uh, video and photo editing or streaming. But, you know, it can do more than that. It can also enhance your AI experience working with the NPU. We are doing video editing on a computationally intensive AI object tracking using WG Resolve. I'm going to do the same thing on the x86 machine. Wow, the Snapdragon X Elite is way faster compared so to the X86. This whole thing can run 1.7x times faster on X Elite as compared to X86. Okay. Then with the NPU, you can run this 3x faster. What a day. It has been a great yeah, day. Mind blowing. Like how many people are working on so many sort of things to make Snapdragon X Elite. I've actually seen demo today of the, the sensing hub, you know, the PC will wake up and if you turn away or dim, I'm actually seeing it uh, working live. Yeah, it, was, it looks so well, quick because yeah, it's like really rapid. Impressive. And I, I think being on the campus physically and just seeing firsthand all the time and effort that the team puts into making sure that they're creating the best quality products yeah. really says a lot about how important it is to them that the Snapdragon X Elite is the best of the best out there. And Am I right by saying this is the first time you guys have been in a compute testing lab? Oh, yeah. Definitely my first time. Yeah. yeah, I feel honored to have been let in, if I'm being honest. Yeah, I didn't know what to expect, no, but I'm certainly either. not disappointed either. Yeah. Yeah. It was pretty amazing. Yeah. The Behind the Silicon series has been shot on Snapdragon. Make sure you subscribe and hit that bell for notifications.